Welcome, I'm Mr. Steve, and today I'm going to show you how to use the sine wave in Blender under the math settings. And if you've ever wondered what exactly to do with this, well, there's a bunch of uses, and I'm going to show you one uh, very logical use case. And it's actually pretty easy to create a nice node group. And here's a little sneak peek snippet from the end of the tutorial where we animate this and create some really cool results that you can use. So stay tuned, stick around, watch the whole video, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, welcome. Let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and throw a Bezier curve in. It really doesn't matter too much what you put in. We're going to click new in geometry nodes and when we do that we can go ahead and get rid of this input we're not going to need it so what we can do is put in a curve line and the curve line we can alt right click if you have node regular enabled and now you'll have a line on the z-axis now you can't see it if you're in the orthographic top view number seven like i am so you have to kind of zero that out then press one on x or y respectively whatever you want it to be on now, in order to get this to show up and, you know, be where we want it, we're going to need to set that position. So let's set the position of our geometry. And as you can see, there's nothing there now. So now we're going to need to get that back, right? So the position uh, node is where we're going to do a lot of our work. And so we want the offset to be controlled by some math. So what we can do right away is let's go ahead and put in a separate x, y, z. And let's make a little space because we're going to need to step up a few other nodes. Now, this is a float into a vector, and we don't want that. So we're going to combine our x, y, and z. So now we have these two purple diamond sockets, which are going to now represent the vector. And now we can output the separate x, y, z to the combine and kind of isolate where this goes. Okay, We're going to be working from the x to the z and creating a sine wave you know, in that area. So we're going to isolate it. And you can, don't worry about it because you can actually do this in any one of these. So you're not going to be wrong. But if you follow along the tutorial, a little better and then play with it afterwards and that's something i always recommend so let's put in a math node and let's switch this to multiply and that's going to give us some control over the sine wave now we can shift d copy this and drop it in and we'll call this a sign okay so we'll turn this into a sign and if you don't know what a sine wave is don't worry a lot of people don't so a sine wave uh, kind of looks like this and yeah there's your cosine as well and it's one of those things that acoustically and naturally will maintain its actual uh, wave pattern it'll maintain its shape so it's pretty cool and we're going to make it all right guys back in blender uh, if you can't see this just highlight it or come over here and select your bezier curve it is there you will be able to see it now one thing we can do is shift a s and let's type in resample for a resample curve. We can leave this set to length because that's what we're going to want. And 0 0.01 shall be just fine. Now I did move the curve line. All right, now in order to get this to show up correctly with the curve line, I want to make sure this is on points. I'll put that to zero and I'll put this X to one. So I had that backwards. So now from this point, we'll have control with our first multiply, that's actually gonna control the oscillation, okay? And then this will control the scale of the sine wave, which is pretty cool. Our resample curve, you could probably set that to count and bring this up if you wanted to, or you can just set it to length and leave it back like it is. Either way, it's fine and it is actually needed, so leave it in there. And now that we've got this set up, let's go ahead and throw in a join geometry. And we'll put that just before the set position. So join G will actually kind of pull that up a little quicker, which will work out good. And what I want to do is I want to tag in an instance on point. So shift A S and we're going to grab 
an instance on points. Now, some people say that the Icosphere is best. I really find the smoothest operation for instancing with a UV sphere. Now, for some reason, that just seems to work a little better for me. I do want the radius to be down, so 0 0.01 uh, probably be good enough. And I'll go ahead and tag that into the instance. Now, what I can do is I can just drop the instance directly into the join, and I will bring the mesh not from the curve line but from the resample. I'm going to tag that into the uh, points for the instance on points because that's where I want the geometry to come from. So now I'm going to make a little bit of room here, and I'm going to want to select where these instances end up. So I'm just going to drag out from that boolean and I'm going to type in end. I'm going to get an endpoint selection and plug this in. And instantaneously, we're going to see that we now have the geometry on one and one uh, respectively. If I move this to zero, it's only going to show up over here. If I move this one, this to zero, it's only going to show up over here. And so that's uh, kind of standard practice for how you would use that. So now if I move this around, you'll see that even though it's not necessarily following it correctly, it is now creating our sine wave geometry via the UV sphere, which is pretty cool. So make sure to create save points as well as you go. Uh, that way you don't crash out because that's no fun. And, you know, like I said, you can change the scale to whatever you want. To be a proper sine wave, probably 0.5 would look pretty good right here. I kind of like that. It looks nice. So now let's do a little bit of cleanup. We'll do some, uh, some geo nodes gardening here. And the set position. See, I could probably just shift right click there and do that. And I actually want the position node down here as well. I'm going to select all these nodes and hit Control J. And I'm going to pull out the geometry nodes end panel and click node. I'll click color. And then I want to drop down a color. Something that probably matches the actual color of the node itself might be a little elusive, so you could choose something maybe like that. Then you can drop down properties, bring this text size all the way up, and then you can type in whatever you want. And I'll just type in sign math right here. Press N to get rid of that. And now I can kind of move this where I want, and I'll save that. And then I've got my original geo set up here so I can. Let me show you, I'll just zoom in. You bring this little four-way mouse right here and left click and then hit F2, you can label it there as well. And so this could be my OG geometry, whatever you want to type in, just so you know. That's just a good method to use so you know what you've got. So that's my OG geometry set up right here, or I could have just called that my curve setup, doesn't matter. And now that is going to be a lot more organized. You can always move a node over if you're a little OCD and you want things to be just a little bit more even than that, then that'll look nice. If you select nodes and hit G and Y, you will spread them out on the Y axis or X respectively. And you can kind of make everything look pretty nice and uniform. Now that's pretty cool. And what I want to do now is I'm going to pull out the rotation for my instances, and I want to type in R-O-T, then space and E. They get a rotate Euler, and we can plug that in. So from here, what we can do is we can try to align this, but it's kind of circular, right? So you don't necessarily need to, and that's why I used it, but if you want to, you can. So you can bring the segments down and have uh, you know some unique shape at the end of this thing. You can bring the rings down and end up with a diamond uh, shape like I did in the beginning. And so another thing, um, probably pretty useful, and I'll just get a group input, and I can bring this value out. And before I do that, I'll just show you the geometry nodes uh, right here is tied into this graph. If I could say that correctly, there we go. And so I want to take the value and plug it in. And when I do that, I now have that sine wave control right here. And you can see uh, which one this is. This is our scale. So what I want to do is come up to the top and press N again. And now I can go to group. And I see value. And I can just double click on value. And I can put scale and hit enter. So that works out nicely. 
You can also grab the node, go to node, and just label this one scale. And now this will say scale on the node. And if that's not confusing, then that will actually end up being helpful. Uh, now I can pull the other input out. Okay, and this one, you could just call it the uh, sign itself, whatever you want to. And I just rename my main node. Just control back on that. So now that I've got this one selected, I can just call this sign control. Or better yet, I think we could just call this sign length. Even though it doesn't necessarily have full control over the length, uh, because we can change that length over here. And if you want to keep it nice and even, you could animate it from over here as well, which is pretty cool. And you can kind of change um, how this ends up looking in a bunch of different ways. Now, one thing I do want to do is I want to set the radius of this curve. And so I'll bring this all down. And this is a curve um, initially in the original geometry and in the geometry nodes. So if I shift a S, type in set and R, it's going to pull up uh, set curve radius. Now, if I just drop this in right here, that's going to make everything disappear. No big deal. And then you'll be able to control the actual radius of the curve. Now, that's not necessarily the control that I want. And real quick, I do want to put this to one and one. So I've got this uh, kind of beginning and end point. Kind of makes a little more sense. And so now, outside of the actual set curve radius, I'm going to pull this out on the selection. I'm going to type in P-A-R-A -A for spline parameter factor. And once I plug that in, now the set curve radius is going to do something a little bit different. It's going to taper off for us. And if you want, you can set it to uh, length as well. And so now it's actually going to taper off. So if I come back over here, kind of zero out the selection. And I want to look at the beginning opposed to the uh, end point. Okay. And what it's going to do is it's going to start tapering this off for us. So if we come back to the set curve radius, you'll see it's going to start off a little smaller. And then by the end, even though it's hard to notice, it gets a little bit bigger. But I do want this a little more pronounced. So I can actually just leave this on the factor selection. And that'll give me a larger... Uh, endpoint. I guess I just make this bigger so you can see it. And then it tapers off at the end, which is kind of cool. And then I'll bring both of these back to one, save it. And now we can start playing around with the math nodes, which are now over here. And I didn't change value, I kind of skipped over that because I wrote the wrong thing. So I'll go back into group, and this one can actually be sine length just like we had it. And so now it's like going to give you a nice beginning and end, which is pretty cool. And then the um, scale, you can change that as well. And for the rotation here, so we didn't finish the rotation. We'll go back to that once I set my scale up just a touch. And this, I think I'm just going to leave this at one. That way it's kind of like more in the screen, at least for this. And then I'll play around with the length. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I was thinking about the rotation here. I can actually just delete this. And go to the UV sphere because we don't really need it. So what do we want to do here? I do a set shade smooth. And bring the segments back up to like 32 and maybe 16 here. So it just is a little bit easier on the eyes. And you can't necessarily tell where um, it's coming from. Looks a little bit better that way. So in other words, it's not coming out of the geometry at like a funky point. Because it's a little bit more complex to achieve the other way. And I want to make this tutorial way too long. Uh, so a set shade smooth here seems good. And if you wanted to. You could also animate the end size 
Let's go 0 0.005 and hold shift and bring that up a little. Maybe something like that. And you can bring the end size up and have another animation going, which is pretty cool. All right, and if you want to play around this thing a little bit more, you can actually clamp the sign value, which will kind of constrain it uh, to the Z axis for us. And then when you run the sign length, you get this effect. Now, because we outputted this on a math multiply, I should be able to hit a hashtag frame and pull in an animation right here. And we'll just put forward slash 1500 and hit enter. Now there's a driver on this. So if I do a nice little horizontal split and pull in a timeline, hit play, we get absolutely nothing. And there ends the tutorial. Thanks for watching. No, just kidding. So this is going to be a little bit different. So I think I got that backwards. If we put 10 in here, yeah, there we go. So now it's going to animate that for us uh, as long as the frames according to the length set here. And that's pretty cool. So, and then you can, on the fly, you can kind of like, you know, play around with this thing. Do whatever you want. That's it, guys. I could go on for uh, <laughs> a while and keep tweaking this thing. But I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for all my subscribers recently. It's really, the channel's really jumped up big time. Thank you for supporting. If you find this to be an educational video as much as entertaining, please smash that uh, bell to get notifications, subscribe, and hit that like button. And if you want to show your support in another way, I do have the supers down below, just above the description. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you very much and happy blending.